I think a little after uh, you speak. So I'd oh, like okay. to invite you now to come up. Um, because I think that of anyone here, you can you know explain, elucidate, you can tell us what it's meant to to um, be a part of this organization and this community. And, and I see how you've inserted yourself into the community, living here, working here, playing here. Um, and uh, it's really fantastic to see. So thank you, Laurel. And having had that introduction, I'm <laughs> glad that I actually wrote something else. <laughs> So, um, I was thinking last night, geez, I better write something out because I'm not a great ad-libber like, uh, like Victor is. So, in thinking about what I would say tonight, I came across advice that really resonated with me. And the advice was, you will write your own retirement speech by the way you come to work every day. So, in thinking about what I would say tonight, I thought about, well, how did I usually feel when I came to work? And those reflections, I think, set the stage for uh, the remarks I'm going to make tonight. And I can, I can say I have always felt really grateful and privileged to be able to work in the cultural sector. Um, how many people with a degree in art history actually get to use it? Not <laughs> many. No matter how difficult or time consuming the work was or how tired or sometimes frustrated I felt, I never felt bored. I never felt that I was doing something that didn't matter. I never wished that I'd done something else with my life. Uh, most of the time. <laughs> Almost never. <laughs> and I've always believed in the importance of museums to society. I feel grateful to have played a role in making a number of different museums better places and stronger places, including, of course, the NVMA. Museums and archives are places that care for and help people understand the things that we value as a community the stories, the archival materials, the objects that explain who we are, where we came from, the evolution of our values, the people, places, and events that have shaped us. I have studied and worked in many fine institutions. Mayor Buchanan mentioned a number of them. To that list, I could also add the Indiana State Museum and the Royal Ontario Museum. Candidly, I never expected to round out my career in a history in a community history museum. But in reflecting back on how I got here, I realized what a privilege and a pleasure most of the time it has been to lead an organization dedicated to making my community a better place. The differences between the NVMA and the other places that I've worked are many. But one of the comparisons that resonates most deeply for me is this. Those places had great art, but NVMA has great heart. <laughs> so what am I proud of when I think back on my career? What would I like to be known for? I don't need to talk about my accomplishments. Some others have spoken about them here. Rather, I hope to be remembered for the kind of person I was and the way that I carried out my responsibilities. I have heard it said that people forget most of what you do and all of what you say, but they never forget the way they felt when you walked into a room. So I've always been greeted warmly on entering a room, that's a good sign, <laughs> and I hope I will be remembered fondly as someone who cared about her staff, her community, and the mission of her organization. I hope I will be remembered as a hard worker, um, actually probably bordering on the workaholic at times. I know I often spent too much time in front of a computer at the expense of time for fun and celebration. But the good news is that even in the few weeks since Wes Wenhart became our director, I don't think there will be any shortage of fun and celebration in the years to come. <laughs> I think I will also be remembered for my persistence when it came to ensuring that the dream of a new museum for North Vancouver would be fulfilled. That much is really clear. I was not going to give up. When I interviewed for this job almost 13 years ago, and 
uh, at least two people who were on the search committee at that time are actually in the room, so thank you for hiring me. <laughs> I was told that building a new museum was a top priority. And then I asked, well, how long do you think it will take to open the doors of this new museum? And I was told, oh, about five years. <laughs> so although it took two and a half times longer than that, and uh, there were a number of setbacks along the way, here we are with a fabulous new museum set to open in less than a year. With the help and assistance of so many people in this room, Tonight, our perseverance has paid off. I'm grateful to have worked with a terrific group of volunteers, municipal staff, elected officials, professional colleagues, and NVMA staff over the years. And I want to thank everybody who has supported me and helped advance the mission of the Museum and Archives. Chief among the volunteers were members of the NVMA Commission, and especially commission leaders who gave up their time to support the NVMA because all of them believe in the importance of what we do. I want to thank all current and past NVMA commissioners and friend society directors. In particular, I would like to recognize by name uh, previous commission chairs. David Roger, who is here tonight, Sharon Shariari, who was unable to attend, Bob Haywood, who cannot attend, Sanford Osler, and current chair who just spoke, Victor Elderton. And I would also like to recognize Don Evans, a former vice chair of the NVMA Commission who passed away unexpectedly several months ago. He was a valued mentor and advisor to me, and his absence from the life of the NVMA and other organizations like the West Coast Railway Association and Rotary left a big hole in our community. Other past commissioners who served their terms and remain still very connected with NVMA today, all of whom are here are Daniel Francis, Rob Watt, and Eric Jameson. Friends directors of long standing who remained in involved in the capital campaign include John Gilmore, Terry McAuliffe, Maddie Polychronis, who couldn't be here tonight, and many others. I have also worked very closely with the co-chairs of the Indigenous Voices Advisory Group, Sandra White and Commissioner Terry Hood, neither of whom are able to be here, and with Indigenous Cultural Advisors Chief Janice George, Carleen Thomas, and Maurice Latash Nahini. And I want to give a shout out to two Sharons, a longtime researcher and writer for The Express, and the 2018 Canadian National Museum Volunteer of the Award recipient, Sharon Proctor, who's here somewhere, I saw her earlier as well as Sharon Fortney, who's always, who is an Indigenous curator at the Museum of, uh, Museum of Vancouver, and she's always provided us with really valuable insights about uh, Indigenous issues, collections, and programs. Municipal staff members I especially want to thank are Gary Penway, Bart Pierce, Robert Skeen, Diana Foldy, Leanne McCarthy, David Stewart, and Charlene Grant. Elected officials I want to recognize and thank, including uh, the mayors of the city and district, both of whom have spoken, current mayors Linda Buchanan and Mike Little, thank you very much, uh, and past mayors Daryl Masato and Richard Walton. City Councilor Don 